guns. Mr. Guns. This is the Walther PPKS, just like James Bond used to tote. Check out the video. America! All right, guys, we're gonna run the Walther PPKS today. This one's in the stainless version. It's pretty cool. It's a little gun in 380. Uh, be real good for a pocket rocket or something to carry around. James Bond seemed to like it. I'm not sure why they would load him up with a low caliber gun like this, but you know, I guess 380 can get the job done if you need it to. Um, all in all, it's a pretty neat little pistol. Let's take a look at it. This is the little Walther PPKS. It's in 380. It does come with a seven round magazine. You'll notice the gun is in stainless. This is one of the newer ones built in Fort Smith, Arkansas. We do have the uh, large beaver tail on the back of this, which is nice because this slide rides really low. And since the slide ride, light rides so low, if you have improper grip or anything like that, this thing's gonna bite you pretty good. So you gotta be careful. It is um, just like I said, typical stainless thing. It's like hand size. You can see how big it is. So, you know, it could make a nice concealment gun. It does have a safety on the side that doubles as a decocker. So if you put your hammer back and, and drop the safety down, it does decock the gun. So that's pretty nice as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, take a look at this gun and we are going to run it a little bit. So the PBK, has kind of a long history. It's based off of the PP, which was a little bit larger gun, and they shortened it down and shortened the barrel and shortened the grip uh, and made the PPK. And the PPK was invented in the 30s, I believe about 1931. Interesting piece of history in 32 caliber, this is what Hitler supposedly put in his mouth uh, and ended his shitty situation. So this gun uh, is in 380. Over the years, they've been manufactured by different people. The PPKS, the word S, it, it kind of means sport. PPK stands for some German stuff that I don't really understand, but it basically it's like police detective gun. It was originally there for uh, this to be a carry gun that was small for the police. So like I said, versus the PP, it was a little shorter, had a little shorter grip. So what they did in 1968, Gun Control Act, the PPK did not fit well within that. So they had to make some slight changes uh, to add a little weight to this gun. And it has a little bit longer grip than the PPK uh, with one more round in the magazine. This one has seven rounds. So they, they made the PPKS to be compliant with the 1968 Gun Control Act. And then it's been built by a few different people over the years, inner arms is, uh, imported or made them, uh, so did Smith & Wesson, and now it's uh, they're made by Walther domestically here in the United States uh, instead of it being an import, and it was um, it is done in Fort Smith, Arkansas. This one's in 380. Uh, as you know, this thing was popularized in Bond movies and things like that, so it's kind of a really iconic handgun. I've never really had the opportunity to shoot it, so what we're gonna do is run it and see whether we like it or not. I've gotta be careful because this slide rides so low and my hands are large, so you can see that it has a tendency to wanna to get into my fat hand here uh, where, the, where the slide can get in and get some slide bite. So if I embarrass myself shooting or get some slide bite, uh, I hope that I'm gripping it right and it's just because of, of my meat, my, you know, whatever you want to call them, my giant meaty paws. So here we go. We're going to run this uh, gun a little bit and just see if it shoots worth a damn. Okay guys, we had to make a little cut there. I just realized right before I shot that I did not have on Ear Pro. Uh, so we're uh, going to go ahead and shoot. Try to keep this thing out of my hands and we'll see how she goes. That was a total miss, which is crazy. All right, that one was solid. That one hits okay. I'm gonna try to find a nice clean one and see exactly where I place it. So I'm trying to put this kind of dead center and I'm gonna get myself situated and be comfy. See, that was really low. That one was off to the left. I guess I just flat missed. I may be jerking a little bit. You guys can make fun of me if you see it. Okay, so that was a little closer to where I wanted to be. Let me uh, reload this magazine real fast and we'll do a little bit more shooting. All right, 
So, you know, on a small gun like this, what I'm kind of concerned about is how shootable it is or how accurate it is. I kind of just have a pocket full of random stuff ammo wise. So what I'm going to try to do is get a nice squared up shot. I was aiming pretty close to center. Now I may be jerking. Okay. So it's a little erratic. I put two next to each other just then. That one's a little low. That one's kind of right where I was trying to put them. And they're all kind of finishing low and left. So that could easily be my grip uh, and what, what I'm doing, or it could just be, you know, combination of short barrel and ammo. So let's put some more rounds through this guy and see what happens. So I didn't really like the way that thing was shooting, the way that I was running like some random ammo that I didn't really know what it was. I mean, granted, I don't have a whole lot of 380 laying around my house and right now we're in an ammo shortage. Uh, so I had to just kind of pick what I had. I do have some 90 grain FTX Hornady Critical Defense in here right now. So it's at least gonna be a quality round. So I wanna see what happens when I run it. I'm about uh, 12 yards out maybe. Okay, that's a lot more direct where I wanted it to be, but now I do have a little stove pipe. Actually, it was not a stove pipe. It was more like a mag catch. It didn't even stove pipe the round. It was just sitting on top. So let's try again. That was a miss totally. Okay, that one's good. What the hell is going on? It's like it's throwing them random places. See, because those are stacking right on top of each other. And so did that one. And so did that one. So I guess it's we can say fairly certainly that that's a reasonably accurate gun. Let's go ahead and reload another mag of this critical defense, and we're going to run it a little bit more too. Okay, let's do one more little dance with this critical defense and see how it goes. Total miss. Right there, that was a little high. I guess maybe I was overshooting. I'm not really gripping the best grip ever, but. So that one's stacked right in there. That one's stacked right in there. That one's stacked right in there. So did that one. And that's the end of the magazine. So for a really short barrel little pistol at like 12 to 15 yards is where I was shooting there, uh, probably closer to 12 on this critical defense stuff. You know, the first shots were really erratic, but I think that might have been my crap ammo. This critical defense, I was able to keep them pretty stacked, but as you saw in the video, sometimes I would randomly miss. I'm bound to think that that's probably me uh, with my, my paws and everything, the way they are wrapped around this little gun. I will say that this was not a comfortable gun for me. It has a sharp edge right here. If I were gonna keep this gun for myself, and used it as a personal defense gun, I might consider just kind of taking that edge down a little bit, like go to a machine shop and let them polish that off to fit my hand a little better because it kind of, the, the fat of my hand kind of wraps up into this. It is easy for that slide to get into your hand. So if I was gonna rate this gun on a scale of one to 10, I'd probably put it about a six and a, or a seven. It is iconic, it's interesting, uh, it's something that, probably you you know everybody should run once or twice just to say that they have it's clearly pretty accurate it works pretty well i mean i would say that this would be fine for a personal protection gun it's a little bit heavy for something like that because of this all steel construction but uh at the same time you know that helps you with accuracy and controllability a little bit so it's kind of a which one do you want do you want lighter do you want more controllable the sights are good i like how the sights are small i don't know if you can see this it does have these thin sights here and this is a small sight which really helps a lot with accuracy because this sight doesn't really get in the way a lot and sometimes as you're like running a glock or something that does have a, a fatter front sight you can actually cover up your targets as you get away 
So this little gun from a defensive range like we were shooting, I mean, it's not a sniper rifle, right? It's a little defensive handgun. I don't know. I, I think it's a good choice. Probably wouldn't be my first choice, but it's definitely one that is interesting and worth, you know, having around or especially if you have a large gun collection, having something like this because of its iconic history would be something really, really cool to have. So as I always say, the gun community is a family, man. You guys be nice to each other. Till we see you next time, y'all take it easy. America!